Tasha here with Butterfield Alpaca Ranch. Welcome to my channel where we talk about alpacas and the fiber arts. You can find all of my social links and websites down in the description box. In this video, I am going to show you one of my spring projects, although this can be done any time of the year. I am going to be sending fiber out to be made into rugs. So this is one of those occasions where we get to use the fiber that is not good enough for yarn and use it for something else. Everything on the alpaca is useful. Even the short and coarse bits, they're all useful for something and they can all bring in revenue as long as you know how to merchandise them and find the right customers for those products. Today I'm going to be selecting some fiber to be sent out for rugs. Um, specifically the energy mats, the smaller rugs, and you can find those in my online shop and the Chicago store. So I'm going to have quite a few made for the spring and summer events that I'm doing. Um, and behind me are a bunch of bins where I'm storing the fiber that is not currently being processed. So right now we are in a house that my parents are renovating, which is next to the house that I live in. And uh, for the winter, obviously, no work was being done, so I used it for storage. So they're all in these bins, as you can see. And I've labeled all of them. And I've designated them for rugs or for dryer balls. And that's pretty much based on color. I like to keep the white fiber for the dryer balls because those sell the best for me when it comes to dryer balls. And the rest, as you can tell, I've labeled rug and the color. So on a day like today, I can come in and I can take what I want for projects that I want. But I have a whole nother row of tubs back here. So all this stuff, um, the very first video that I made about my studio, I'll link up on the corner and also down in the description box. But I, at one time I had over a hundred bags of fiber just sitting in there. And this is all part of that. Most of it was rug fiber. Um, and so today I'm going to take these bins or selected bins over to the studio and we are going to go through it and decide what gets to be made into the energy mats this week. So now we're in the studio and as you can see I brought nine of those tubs over. I did want to explain what rug fiber is and what makes it different from other fibers. And I have this cheat sheet over here of a bunch of information. Um, but let's look at the grading criteria section down here in the fineness, right here. So at least in the US, um, we deal with six. Well, it depends on what grading system you're using. In this one specifically, there's six. And so this is the one that I use that I go by. So when you hear me talking about certain grade, well, this is what I'm referring to. And each grade is a range of micron, the actual diameter of each fiber. The finer the fiber is, you know, the, the lower the grade here, or higher the grade, depending on how you want to say it. And um, so the grades one and the grades one is like baby alpaca, what's labeled baby alpaca, which the first sharing of an alpaca when they are a baby is going to be the finest. So that's where that term comes from. But baby alpaca does not always refer to a baby's fiber. It's referring to this fine grade, the finest grade here. Grades one, two, and three are good for next to the skin items. Uh, around your neck and your head and things like that. Grade four, still nice next to the skin, but it being a bit higher in micron, num uh, grade four is great for socks. And then we get into five and six, and that is rug fiber territory, especially uh, six and above. So there are, I actually... I have seen a grade seven on a fleece before, um, so that's that's not very good. But what that means is this fiber is not fine enough to be worn next to the skin, so we need to find other uses for it. It still has all the wonderful characteristics of alpaca, like it's hypoallergenic, uh, stain resistant, water repellent, things like that. So all of those 
Oh, including fire retardant. Now, if you remember that video I made about all the qualities of alpaca fiber, all of those qualities still exist in a grade five and six. So great for rugs that get a lot of wear and tear. You can actually put one of my rugs in front of the fireplace. Um, actually had someone looking specifically for a rug to put in front of fireplace and a lot of commercial rugs you can't unless it's treated to be fire retardant. Well, a packet doesn't have to be treated with anything to be fire retardant. It just is. Again, great for being a rug. My next step now is to weigh all of the fiber. I want to order about 50 energy mats. Each mat's going to use 9 ounces of fiber which means I need just over 28 pounds of fiber to make those 50 mats. And I have a couple of scales here. This was my first scale, uh, which worked great. Um, it's, it's a postal scale. Like This comes up, so like you could put a package in there kind of thing. Um, do I even have it on? No. The disadvantage with this uh, was two things. First, it was a max of five pounds. And I do have bags of fiber that weigh more than that, and so I wasn't able to get an accurate measurement unless I split it out. And that's just more work. Secondly, when, um, I used this bin here to put the bags of fiber in, and that bin blocks the display, which means I would have to listen to it beep, press the hold button, and then take that off, and that didn't always work. It was a lot of extra steps. Um, but I got this because it was a really inexpensive way to go. Um, I think it cost $10 or so. So as a first scale, it worked really well for me. I have now upgraded to this one. I don't know how much I paid for it, um, but it's a max of 110 pounds. Yeah, it's upside down there, sorry. 110 pounds, um, which means I could pretty much weigh anything I want. And as you can see, it has the an external display, so it will save me time in eliminating those extra steps I had to do with this one. So what I'm going to do, I have this bin, um, it's a reject now because it's broken, but it still works great for this purpose. So what I will do is place this bin on the scale. This is gonna weigh it. So I need to zero it out, so it's only going to measure the fiber that I put in. Okay, well, zero it out again. Okay. Okay, so I realized that this was not centered on the scale, and that's why I was having trouble with the, the readout. So, that is all fixed now, and what I'm going to do is just put each bag in here and weigh it, and then make a note of each color and the weight, and then we'll see what we have at the end. Pulled out, it is pretty much still vacuum sealed. So something I do to reduce the size of the bags for storage, leaving you with something similar to this. So this is going to be quite heavy. Six pounds, 14.8 ounces. Yes, yeah, so you can see how I can get such a large amount of fiber in a little bit of space. And this also is what I'm going to do when I mail the fiber to, um, to the rug mill, is I'll vacuum seal it like this so I can get it in a smaller box. Today I'm showing you how I ship fiber. I'm working on sending some fiber um, to my rug maker in Texas to do some energy mats, some mini rugs for me. What you're looking at here is a bag that is over 13 pounds. It's nearly 14 pounds of fiber. And I vacuum out the air to make it a smaller size that is easier to ship. I've already done a box over here. Um, as you can see, 
that it's quite full. This black bag is, um, what was it? Thir um, over five pounds, like five and a half pounds or so. And this bag is gray and that was about four. Uh, you can see the small space I have it in and that there's a lot of air coming out. This one I can see there's some air coming back in. So I'm gonna have to redo that one a bit. One thing that was different with this is there wasn't enough space um, at the top here to tie it off. So I taped it down and that seems to be working. I might do the same with this. So I'm going to put this bag in this box and vacuum out the air. Now you can position it uh, you know, take the air out before you put it in a box, but I, I like kind of conforming it to the box as I do it. And I've never done a bag this large, so we'll have to see. <laughs> I do believe it's going to fit in this box when I'm done, though. Okay. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. We'll do it this way, then. Okay, so I have a vacuum. Um, the vacuum wand and I have pantyhose on the end of it so it'll suck the air out but not the fiber. Um, I put the wand in the fiber because that's where I want the air to come out um, rather than it sucking the bag which is not going to get me anywhere. So I just collect the plastic around it so that I'm ready to seal it up once all the air is gone. Okay, here we go. that up, get my tape. Um, you might already know that you need to use a bag without holes, so it typically needs to be a new bag. Reused bags tend to have small holes in them, unless you've, unless you've stored it really, really well. But my experience to toting around these bags and working with the fiber, you end up getting small holes in it. <clears throat> which is not going to work for this. All right, so anywhere that I can see possible air might get in. And here you can see why I prefer to do it in the box because it, it'll conform more to the shape of the box, but otherwise, I'm gonna move this around a bit. You can hear that tape starting to pull it off. But that's all I'm gonna do in this box. There we go. 